I think the honorable thing for our species to do is deny our programming. Stop reproducing. Walk hand in hand into extinction. One last midnight, brothers and sisters opting out of a raw deal. If we do not trust any friends or family members. I repeat, do not trust there we go. It's what happening. You, yeah. What what you been reading, Chris? What have I oh I've been reading uh, a book, uh, Argentinian book called Tender is the Flesh. Have you have you heard of this one? No, not at all. Great title. Yeah, yeah. It's uh it's a full on like uh post apocalyptic cannibal uh book. But um the basic premise is that um a disease spreads through animals and they become, you know, toxic to humans so that like even a, even the faintest bite will kill you. Uh, so meat is out, but uh, it turns out that people find human meat appealing. Uh, and so they kind of create this whole like factory farm system to cultivate humans. And um, a lot of it is about the, uh, just the, the use of language, like the, the way that we think about the world and, and deny um i guess these uh these abuses of capitalism like the uh the these systems of that that just kind of perpetuate atrocity uh it's kind of, you know it's kind of got this kind of metaphorical thrust to it but uh, it's 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 very disturbing but uh, but very well uh, done that's a funny way to get to that scenario um, it is like you really have to suspend some disbelief but then when you kind of draw parallels to the atrocities of capitalism that just kind of go you know unchecked so that we can have uh you know cheaper uh clothing or whatever you're like okay i kind of get where you're where you're you're going with this yeah for sure um and uh yeah i I, i'm guilty of doing this all the time but it, it immediately makes me think of um texas chainsaw where you know cannibalism and meat the meat industry are 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 linked um yeah almost almost immediately um yeah well that sounds awesome man jeez yeah yeah, uh, yeah. it's yeah, all enjoyable but it's uh it's yeah. engaging yeah yeah it's uh i don't know all i've been reading is is spawn batman crossovers uh-huh. <laughs> well Snake. i've i have read a little bit about that too yeah yeah Ugh. also um you know, hard hard to call enjoyable. Uh, I figured we'd start our our day off with a little bit of this. Hmm. I'm assuming you'd never read this before. Oh, I no, I'd never read this before. Right. So, uh, for, for those listening, hi everyone. Uh, Extinction Agenda. This is uh, the Spawn slash Batman crossover, which came out in 1993. I forget. I don't think I wrote it down. I don't really give a shit. It's Todd. McFarlane uh, doing the art and we got Frank the Tank uh, reprising uh, coming back to the Batman after (laughs) after a long, long time. Just Uh, full on hack work here, too. (laughs) It's terrible. So so I don't you probably also haven't read Frank Miller's work with Jim Lee, like when he did Batman and uh, all star Batman and Robin. Uh, I did read all star Batman and Robin, actually. Okay, all right. But I don't remember it well because I don't think it was very good. Well, it's not because it's this Batman. It's it's this like stupid punk, you know, like his. Oh uh, God. Yeah, like this caricature of Batman existed earlier than I realized. Uh, having like I I had some vague recollections of this of this comic book, but um, I hate this Batman. <laughs> yeah, I knew I, I at a certain point I started getting angry because I was just like, this is not Batman. Mm-hmm. It's uh, I it feels like he watched Dirty Harry and was like, yeah, that's what Batman should be. Uh, but I I think that's what Dark Knight Returns is like. What the problem is is like that attitude to old man Batman works extremely well. Uh, you know, I've I've read Dark Knight Returns relatively recently. It still holds up. It's 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 a fun ride. Um, but for whatever reason, Frank Miller's imagination of what a young version of the dark knight returns batman is like is like a fucking idiot who who has like just un, uninteresting unsympathetic um kind of a boob uh and you, you know not just 
Dr. You know, Step, he's a he's he's a full on sadist, like explicitly so. Yeah, although the, I'd say there's there, again there's some of that in Dark Knight Returns, but it's not as you're right. Like when he he's like I jump from three stories and hit him right in the kidney. <laughs> she should be That's in prison. exactly. <laughs> It's going to take him six months to get out of the hospital, but, you know, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. Um, but I guess that is one way to do it. You know, like if, if Batman shows up, he fucks you up and you are not going to commit crime anymore. That's you know, he doesn't just punch you in the face and like scare you away. He fucking cripples you. Um, that might be an appropriate way to handle things in Gotham City. I'm not sure. Who am I to say? Yeah. It feels like it's hard to be sympathetic to the Bane storyline if that's you know if that's your baseline. <laughs> that's true. And you're right. Bane only works in uh, the sanitized non Frank Miller universe. I hate to see what I would never want to know what uh, Frank's Bane was, is like. Um, oh God, yeah, that's there'd be nowhere to go. You can't. It'd be really hard to top this. Yeah. Yeah. Even uh, the opening, like, uh, as he's like descending on some criminals, startled curses, muffled gunshots, horrid pounding, <laughs> shrieks <laughs> of pain, dull moans, near silence. Yeah. Fuck that. I, I and it's just it's terrible writing. Like he, I don't, I don't know why it's this bad. And I, I can't just be hack work. Like there's, there's he's. Cause he's still doing Sin City at this time. Like he's still capable of, like, he hasn't gone completely insane yet. Although he's on his way. Like th- this is clear evidence of that. Um, is it just yeah. about the paycheck? Is it just like, I'm working with Todd McFarlane. I, this is dirty by nature and uh, I'm just going to phone it in. Like I, I, it really feels like that. It does. It feels super phoned in, but I don't know. I don't like, I, and I'm trying to, yeah, actually, the other spawn work that he did was super, but it was very phoned in. It was very nothing. Uh, so it could very well have been a paycheck and, and or just like, and also the exposure, you know, like he's going to sell millions of copies of this and those people are going to go over and buy Sin City. Like it could just be as cynical as that. That's true. Todd's going well, so hard on this, though. Like the art's great. Yeah. Well, for this is a dream come true for him, you know, like I don't I don't think he ever Todd ever really got to draw Batman, I think, for a brief period early in his career. But he was a Marvel guy. Um, and so this is probably uh, I mean, considering what Spawn looks like, I think we know who he really wanted to draw. He wanted to draw the Batman. Yeah. Uh, and now here's his chance. Even the cape, uh, like it's it's like almost expressionistic, like it did. It, it, it's conforms to mood it, it like looks like lengthening shadows or claws it's uh it's it's interesting yeah, mm-hmm. yeah the action's really good like um there's no there's no pulled punches although he um kind of fuck you know he's not a background guy the colorist really hides the lack of backgrounds does a good job of that um that's a special skill as we've learned from reading sandman uh, right yeah, no, I, 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 I the backgrounds. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even notice. I, yeah, yeah, you do get them sometimes. Like in a splash page, you'll get like these towering, uh, you know, buildings and stuff like that. It's just kind of it's enough to to trick the eye. Yeah, you still get in all of this. Uh, even though this is hack work, you nonetheless get the Frank Miller hobby horses, like the shit that pisses them off. Uh, you know, Doctor Margaret Love, founder and president of Heal the World, was awarded. Uh, the lame, uh, lame, lame beer. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if that's <laughs> supposed to be a joke. prize for humanitarian achievement. Uh, you know, the rewards of self-actualization, empowerment, and attitude adjustment to the disenfranchised of our troubled planet. You know, it's it's he's being satirical, um, and tying uh, self-help and uh, you know, like all all that. Well, exactly what they just said, self-actualization, empowerment and attitude and just like linking it directly with capital, um, linking it with the military industrial complex, linking it with uh, the destructive urge of uh, the the, sort of modern American society or or North American capitalist society. That that bite is still there, even though 
this comic is fucking stupid. Um, but he, he, like when he, when he's like, okay, we, I'm going to phone it in. I'm going to phone in my usual, like my usual shtick and I'm just going to bake it in and have a Batman story around it. Yeah. There's like some Robocop stuff in here for sure. Like he's just kind of pulling <laughs> it all together. Um, it's, I guess we could, like the very briefly the plot. Yeah. What? Well, yeah. What, what is there to say? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, it is that, uh, Batman's on the trail of, Holy shit, Street Crime in Gotham too. Like opens up, he's got he's found some like street gangs with nukes and he's like investigating this like this warehouse. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and they've got cyborgs, uh, which are they're like a sh- they're like a shitty like Russian um funhouse mirror of, of Robocop. You know, they're just like uh you got this uh this battle with this hulking uh cyborg uh doing some damage and uh batman gets the upper hand but um well, they're, the, they're, sorry they're an insect like uh i don't know what the point of pointing that out is but i just find that they're uh yeah they're it's more like giant bugs but yeah you're right about that I, i'm looking more i think i was looking more at the close-ups when he like smashes the visor and inside there's like there's right. homeless people who have gone through a chop shop and they've just like they've taken their skull like they're taking their head and, and inserted it into this and like they're unwillingly pilots of this uh, of these machines and this that's a proper horror mo- moment there that uh, where am i i don't know where i am i can't feel my arms yeah and, uh, yeah batman just kind of like pulls the head out and uh, it's about to self-destruct and tries to get the guy out of there but um I think as it's true good oh go sorry ahead. don't oh, don't mind me just rejecting every <laughs> couple seconds yeah the, uh, I like I like some of Frank's um, Batman talk in this. Uh, just when you know, still move, cyborg of some kind, you know, a human part, blah blah blah. Um, I just like it's like wrestling a jackhammer. Uh, get inside, get past it, him. You know this this talk, and I don't know that Frank's good at a weird evocative simile. I, that's uh, you know well placed. You can you can have a you can evoke something. He's good at yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. No, this like this early part had some promise. Like I this I felt this moment. I was like, oh god, this is this is horrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know the you could there's uh there's some real danger here for Batman. Um, but uh, as you kind of alluded to, the um, like basically a homeless shelter is the villain here. And uh, <laughs> but this uh, but the the creator of it and this is that you guys talked about this when you when you looked at spawn but it's that that inherent cynicism in the the spawn universe it's like batman yes. being cast in a funhouse mirror through this mm-hmm. um like he's he's become sadistic and like they even 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 attempts at charity are going to be uh, someone's like a puppet master that's going to fuck you over uh if you're homeless they're gonna they're gonna give you free soup for the harvest your organs and send you to be a a Russian cyborg. Uh, yeah. So you can, so this, uh, this woman can, uh, Margaret Love, Dr. Margaret Love can heal the world by uh, enslaving everybody and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So this well, puts him on the trail. Her. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was just, I, I, it was jumping ahead, but like she wants to cleanse the world of, of, you know, she's like, I had this realization that free will is the problem. And so I'm going to create a race of cyborgs under my command and destroy the world. You know, it's proper super villainy, actually. Yeah, um, it's it's big time. Yeah. And so the connection is uh, and like this is like this literally all the plot. Uh, but uh, this homeless person was uh, was Al's friend. So that's like spawns looking into it as well. They hmm. they fight. They don't like each other. They team up to be really don't. love and uh, they they're triumphant. That's There's it. A lot. Nailed it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even the Wikipedia entry is hilariously brief uh, in comparison to the to the other version of this, the Batman slash Spawn with uh, with the, the the Trinity of Batman writers at the time. Uh, it's it's a it's a very full entry. You get the impression that you get like an actual story <laughs> 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 rather than a spectacle. Um, Incidentally, the reason that all three of them wrote it is because there were such royalties to be had that they thought it would be unfair if any one individual wrote it. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. So they they wrote it all together. Get that payday. 
Does Alfred enter into any of Frank Miller's other stories? He feels very out of place in this one. Yeah, it's not a good it's not a good Alfred moment. Um, I don't know. I like I mean, obviously, he's in Dark Knight Returns um, quite a bit. And he and he's sort of heartfelt there. But yeah, the, oh, the Batman. Shit. Yeah, I forgot yeah. that he was. Yeah, he's still also a really, really old guy. Um, but yeah, he does feel out of it's not a it's not a really great interaction there you know he didn't yeah. get the, the he ought to have but i also don't I, like I, how he's dr- <laughs> you don't like how he's drawn yeah yeah by um by todd it's like almost like a cartoonishly long face like well, uh i i will maintain and have maintained and continue to maintain that that todd mcfarland is a caricature artist he's not a real <laughs> he's nothing but a caricature artist um and who happens to be able to draw backgrounds in action. Uh, that's actually pretty fair from what I'm looking at here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would like, I would like a whole series of Alfred, like working with this Batman, like just like his day to day. Cause he's, uh, <laughs> he's, you just like, can't Bruce just shows up with this, like severed homeless guy's head. And yeah. uh, like, he just hands it over to Alfred to hold. This guy's way too intense. Well, he's super intense, you know, and he's just like, I don't get nightmares. I give them. No need for punchlines, sir. You're among friends. <laughs> As he hands him a severed fucking head. Put this um, on ice. Yeah. And he just, uh, and he puts the head on a platter and stands there, like, holding the gloves. Like, he's, you can tell a lot about, well, I'm not sure what you can tell. Actually, I'll take that back. I was I was going to say that you could tell a lot about a person by how they choose to depict Alfred. But I think, you know, but <laughs> I think that's also a stupid sentence. I think it's interesting. <laughs> I think it's interesting that Alfred and, and Commissioner Gordon and all those characters, they're so malleable uh, from generation to generation. Like, even though they are like. It would be like fucking around with Robin all the time, but it's just this space where you can you can draw something of the age or something of the moment. Uh, yeah, it's just a it's an it's a it's a neat area where people can put their stamp. And I don't, yeah, I don't like I don't like his stamp. Um, yeah, so uh, this comic, um, <laughs> it uh, it happened. It it's, happened. Uh, yeah. It's a. What it's do you think about? It's, yeah, it's a. Well, I was just gonna ask, like, given how embarrassing this is, like, because we've never talked about Frank Miller outside of um, RoboCop Terminator and this, uh, and I know James and I have talked about other Frank Miller comics, but I like, I don't. What's your beat on the dude? Like, uh, <sighs> you, you a fan? You not a fan? You uh, ambivalent? I'm kind of a fan, like from his like from the heyday of frank i i like sin city i like uh dark knight returns i like daredevil like you know that the, the stamp on comics is incredible like he's uh he's uh he's amazing um mm-hmm. but he really went off the rails and like there's no denying that like he's just it's it's a mess after that yeah um he's kind of come back to sanity a little bit i think but i i don't think his current work is i read that uh the Dark Knight Returns, where Master Race? Um, no, the one with Robin, but Robin is like going Super. evil. It was a Joker story. Came out a okay. few years ago. I can't even okay, remember. Okay, I know. Uh, JRJR did the art, right? John right, Romain yeah, Jr. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was not. It, it felt like nothing. It didn't feel like a, you know, it was just an. It had Frank Miller's name on it. Yeah, that's I I'm, I find that there's two types of Frank Miller nowadays, which is the kind that you just described, and then there's the other kind where where I truly am baffled. Like when I read something like Xerxes, I'm like, what the f- what the fuck are you doing? Like you you're just like you're just illustrating natural history comics for no good reason, and giving them like really shitty dialogue. Um, he could be doing worse things. Don't don't get me wrong, but I'm just confused. Uh, and even when he tries to like be political and kind of punch with his work, like he did do, uh, a Batman, um, 
story later on with uh, fuck, I don't know, a really cool artist whose name I can't think of, but it's it's post post um, Dark Knight Three, the Master Race or whatever, and it's just like the story where uh, I don't know, fucking Supergirl or fights dark side or something which but the joker's involved anyway it's it's dumb saying it out loud is dumb but it it was okay but that's the that's the heights that you're gonna get nowadays like yeah what's this guy doing yeah it's it's uh it's tired i guess maybe it's time for yeah, retirement yeah but you shouldn't get worse at with age you know like he, he should be getting better like he his his uh like alan moore got better or, or, or at the very least, like, no, maybe he didn't get better, but he got like more. You saw more craft. You see some development. You see it with Grant. You see it with all these old timers, uh, old timers at this point, and you know they're learning yeah. lessons, and building, and like yeah, Frank, he's just getting yeah. looser and looser it's just until hard he, like, to, you know. the legacy's there, but mm-hmm. yeah, like nothing, not, nothing excites you about a new Frank project. Oh yeah, I'll show up. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I'm going to show up for each and every Frank project because he's going to be dead one day and I'm going to be sad. I'm going to be sad that I didn't check out what the maestro was up to at 60 as he was losing his fucking mind. Um, cause that's, uh, cause why not? The, yeah. I started reading, uh, I hadn't. So, okay. So the reason I asked the question is cause there's a whole swath of Frank Miller stuff that I have not read. Um, I've never read Ronan. I've never read Electra Assassin. I've never read um, Martha Washington Goes to War or or Give Me Liberty or or Martha Washington Goes to War. Um, I have all these things. I actively choose not to read them. I've accumulated (laughs) accumulated them with the intention of like, yeah, I'm totally going to read those things. Like I have to. Like they look great. They're they're art objects, but. uh, And yeah, I, I was just like, there's just I don't like this guy. Like he's, I like some of the work that he's done in the past, but, and, and Sin City, but he's really hit or miss for me. Like even that said though, reading, uh, give me Liberty or, or I believe that's what it's called. Uh, the Martha, like the first Martha Washington, it's actually very good. Um, it's got Dave Gibbon art. It's, it's interesting. You know, it's still Frank in a, in a particular Frank mode, but, uh, he uses a lot of like ellipsis, uh, his story, like, moves around in time it's uh it's it's got a lot of punch and it's 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 a good story in a in a way that i didn't really think about frank telling stories um and so i don't know there's there's i think the period that we think of it goes a bit later but by this point you know martha washington's 1990 he's got sin city going on. i think sin city destroyed his mind is really what I think happened like once he went full sin city it was just like i can do whatever i want <laughs> watch out everybody that's um, a plausible hypothesis hmm. yeah yeah because that's the end point really yeah there's nothing there's the, the yeah it just kind of falls off a cliff after that yeah unless he's doing sin city and then it's gold yeah you know yeah like it's like it's like what he was built to make uh, <laughs> and, and then he's all done now. Like he didn't, he didn't come up with any other project or any other like ambition, which that's I don't is. know. That's yeah. Yeah. I, there's what a lack said, of ambition. But what a horrible thing to say about a person, uh, yeah. you know, like someone, someone who has left such a stamp, like I, how many people are, are can easily think to themselves, like you guys don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Frank's still on top. Um, he's not. But <laughs> those yeah. people are wrong. Yeah. Well, this anyway. is a case in point here. Like, <laughs> like what is the what is the impulse here? Like, what 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 animates this? Like, it it's really just the sad showcase for Batman and Spawn to fight, which is purely it's got to be just a, a fan thing that that people wanted to see, right? Like, it's pure fan service. Mm-hmm. But um, it's so sad. Like the um. The, the tone like when when they do get into it it feels like when two kids are playing and mm-hmm. they are both like embodying characters that they're the best but then they have to come to some sort of like negotiation about that like uh, like your punches wouldn't hurt me i'd be too tough for that 
and <laughs> just sort of like, okay, okay, like you're trying to come to a game where both people win, but you're still on top. I, yeah. I, I feel like the I feel like Todd's involvement has to be in there because just yeah, like spawns uh, literal. You got all this like uh, it's like kicking a slab of granite, yet he still hisses like a man. Al does breathes like a man. What's he made of? And then uh, the um, nerf gas. Oh, what is that quote? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, knock it off, Batman. I'm not in the mood and I don't have time. Like it's just uh, it's, it's just not good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I I think I think there's a lot of narrative. There's a lot of genre conventions at play here, obviously, like if you're going to have these crossovers, like even when Spider-Man and Superman crossed over, there's a Superman Spider-Man fight. You know, of course you want to see it. You want to see something. That's what you showed up for. Um, But it's the shittiest fight. Oh, you still there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm still there. Woo. Just taking <laughs> that in. Yeah. No, it just yeah, it feels like it's so both characters. Oh, you're getting choppy there, Chris. That's why I was asking if you were still there. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe if you get too excited. I've read Spawn. Read Spawn right. before. I've, mm-hmm. I've read probably at least 20 issues. I still don't feel like I know what Spawn does. <laughs> Oh, I've I've read, uh, you know, as you know, James and I have, have dipped in like every hundred episodes, every hundred issues uh, just to see like where where things have landed. I still don't know. Like I, it's a it's a nothing. It's an empty signifier at any given moment. Uh, and it, it, they just he just builds this ridiculous or, or should I say that Todd McFarlane like hires other people to build this ridiculous soap opera around this. Even <laughs> hires is a little. <laughs> There's some question around that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it doesn't do the art. Um, it does some of it now. I mean, like, he's kind of stepped up a little bit, I think. Um, but either way, it's stupid. Like, it's fucking dumb. And I don't know what it's about. And I don't know why people buy this comic. I don't understand the appeal of this property for, like, a hardcore set of individuals that allowed Spawn to exist for 300 plus issues. There's been off. There's still like like King Spawn, Gunslinger Spawn. Like he he COVID made him Todd McFarlane crazy because he was like, oh no, the industry is going to collapse. So I have to do all these spinoff titles and I'm going to try to hold it up just by myself. Um. And yeah, and he had just recently had a Spider-Man uh, Spawn Batman crossover, which, which is what put this in my mind. I think that's right. Uh, I saw there's a new one. Yeah. Another kick at the can. Yeah. Well, oh, fuck, why not, man? Time to make some money. 90s are big. Uh, you know. So, anyway. Uh, that's it. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I think, like, all... Uh, just the I, <laughs> the end is the only thing I wanted to comment on where... Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, where Batman, you know, like, Spawn's trying to make peace... Uh, they 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 saved the day. They stopped the nukes from launching, and uh, you know he just tries to extend an olive branch, and then just the stupidest flash page of like Batman whipping a batarang into Spawn's face. And there's this whole thing throughout the whole comic where Batman is so excited because he finally doesn't have to hold back. Here's someone who can take right. maximum pain, and it's just like it <laughs> just entices him. And just you get that final image of like these batarangs sticking out of Spawn's face. It feels like a judgment on Todd almost, you know, like it's sort of like a tongue in cheek thing, but like, you know, you know, we can work together. Bury the hatchet. No. There it is. Yeah. Image is, uh, you know, there's we can't truck with the uh, with your murderous ways. Yeah. You know, honestly, man, like I, I hate to admit it, but this final this final image is is like ripe with symbolism uh, in a way that I hadn't considered at all because i just thought it was stupid but like yeah he's got the battering in his face it, it's you know it's what you say but he's also like is and he's smiling as if like that's i hear you you know and <laughs> yeah he's also like dripping like it's i don't know it's kind of sexual too and you're just like <laughs> the end you know and you're like good work frank I, I yeah maybe i didn't appreciate like the the all out ballsness of this as a stupid gesture because I think like the stupidity overwhelmed its balls. It really did. Yeah. And you're like, why did I read that? Why did I spend so much money for that? 
because this would have been expensive at the time. Uh, I remember this was like a prestige format, cost you seven dollars and fifty cents or some shit. Yeah, and you're hoping it'd be worth like six thousand by the time <laughs> 2023 no, rolled around. These ones, yeah. Yeah. Come mm. to wake up and smell the roses, um, or or I guess smell the shit. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was Batman Spawn, Spawn Batman. Frank Miller, the Todd father. What we really came here today to talk about, and I'm curious, actually, if we're going to get as much conversation out of this. Oh, I think we will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck. I got some shit to say about this. one. I bet, man. All right. So so I've kind of been interested, as you, as you know, I like to I like to dip into the, the maestros of the 70s over, <laughs> at Marvel, over at Marvel Comics. We've done Steve Englehart. Thank you very much for that. We've done a bunch of Doug Mensch. Also, thank you. But today it was time to do some Steve Gerber. Um, and although this isn't, I'd say that this is prime Steve Gerber, but it's not like, because Howard the Duck stuff has uh, more comedy, more explicit comedy and more like social commentary, like explicit social commentary. Um, but this this struck me as weird beyond measure. Um, and this <laughs> is Adventure into Fear. Number 21 to 23, which came out between um, April and August of 1974. Um, I don't know, man. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> uh, this is like some weird Gulliver's Travels with Morbius. Oh, like it's, shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like this adventure through weird, like, uh, you know, fantasy landscapes with like science fiction overtones. I need you to enlighten me about Steve Gerber because I, I don't really know much about him. And I, I this is not what I expected from the guy who did Howard the Duck. Like, yeah, is yeah. this is Howard the Duck good? For, I guess I'll ask for one. Like, yeah, yeah. I've, been, I've been I've been reading it. I was reading it with Matthew uh, earlier this morning. Um, it uh, it's not bad. You know, I'm not going to I'm not going to say that it's good, but like it's it's pretty good comics. Like I was entertained. So I was flipping through it. It's a little dense because it's a 70s comic. Um, but, uh, the art, the art's pretty good. Uh, you got, you got Frank Brunner at first and then you got Gene Colan. Oh yeah. Me, like me and Gene. And, uh, it's, yeah, it's just about this, this, it, you know, it's, it's a comic series, like a, like a proper gag strip series, but the, the you know, but, um, Howard's always commenting on society, you know, in a really overt way or, or the scenarios are, but it's a, like, it's a parody comic and it's. I'm not going to say it's funny, but it was it's it's sexy and kind of and and weird. All right. And then how does uh, this is weird. But how yeah. did this come before or after? This is before. So okay. so uh, Steve's career begins in 1972 with Shanna, the she devil. Uh, and he's you know, he's just kind of a jobber. And so this is in 1974. Um, and this he only like actually he stops doing this. At uh, issue 26, Doug Mensch takes over and it takes a dip in quality. If you, <laughs> yeah, if you, yeah, have. I know that's slander. <laughs> it's really becomes boring. Like I don't give a <laughs> shit about Morbius. Like the fact that this story was the like the choice. To, anyway, it was a lot of a lot of big concepts here. But um, yeah, Howard the Duck didn't. Steve didn't become popular until Howard the Duck. Uh, which is like 76 to 78 or something like that. Uh, and he also wrote the Defenders for a while. For he has a really long Defenders run. Uh, and so that's sort of his claim to fame. But really, he turfed out of Marvel like after Howard the Duck, like 78, 79, because he entered into a lawsuit with Marvel to try and get ownership of Howard the Duck, which he lost <laughs> horribly because he was uh, for hire. Sure. And he signed, yeah. Um, he just didn't, you know, like the new copyright act came into effect and I, he, he tested, he wanted to test the waters, but, but, uh, they, they wore him down in court and he was going to lose anyway. I think it was pretty clearly a, a work for hire relationship. And he was just hoping that new trademark laws would have, uh, retroactively provided him with some sort of windfall. So he settled out of court, uh, and lost even with the settlement, which is maybe they gave him some money. I hope they gave him some money for his troubles, but probably not. Um, uh, probably settled just so he didn't have to pay their court fees. Uh, it's 
it's yeah, it's uh, it's kind of embarrassing actually. I didn't realize that. I always thought of him as like a champion for creator rights, and I guess he kind of is, but in the way that like like someone who's charging uh, like by themselves the entire German, uh, <laughs> I, you know, like is is uh, is a hero in some sense. Um, uh, so anyway, I died in the slaughter. Yeah, yeah. But he he kept a. He sort of kept a career after that. He ended up working at Valiant. Uh, he even actually did some stuff for Image. Like he wrote uh, uh, Wildcats special number one with Travis Charest. Um, I, I always keep my eye out for Steve's name because he, you know, he just kept. Mo- after that, he moved to television and he just wrote GI Joe and Transformers and you know made him fucking a mint probably uh, more money than he would ever ever made in comics. And so he would just like dip back and. Anyway, that's probably a fuller answer than yeah, you interesting. needed. Yeah, no, that, that actually, that's that's good to have that context. Um, this is my first note on this was what the fuck? Uh, the uh, so like, yeah, we we have um, Morbius showing up, and he's been in previous issues. His enemy, the uh, hip, <laughs> hypnotic spell of the occult priest, Daemond, has. Um, has like fallen Raven. on him and he's he, a demon yeah yeah oh he actually is a demon oh i have no idea i know i just i just the oh name. you just you made the Damon. connection yeah yeah oh it's yeah it's definitely out there um and so now morbius has to run around doing his bidding and the first thing that this guy wants is uh he ambushes this limo and there's like a little girl in the car and he's like no not you he can't force me to attack a child that is exactly what Damon wants him to do I, yeah, and I think that I remember the previous issue like ended with uh, a cliffhanger. Like he opens it up and there's this little girl like, hey, you know. Uh, right. And so, yeah, he, and, and this is the stupidest moral conundrum I've ever seen anyone in. Like, in <laughs> Because, like, he's like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it because I'm hypnotized. And then, like, he tries to walk away. And then all of a sudden, like, then he's like, but I'm still going to do it because I have a bloodlust. You know, and, like, that, <laughs> yeah. like that's how mind control works. You know, it's not like the, you're supposed to like make someone choose what you want them to do and make them think, think that it was their choice, you know, that they weren't manipulated. And it's just like this masterclass in how self-deception works. And then he attacks the child. Um, right. Exactly. It's, it's a like, recurring like, theme, actually. It is. <laughs> he's, like, a, he's really dangerous. Yeah. And I like the, and when James and I covered that, um, so I'm just turn my heat down, sorry, because I'm fucking boiling in here. The um, when James and I covered the other Morbius, I was just like, no, you're you like the like the the later series from like 2015 or something like that. And like reading these old issues, I was like, you don't understand the danger that you're everybody is a, is in around this guy. Like he's a fucking loose cannon. He's He's running around. He wants to do good. He wants to resist his bloodlust. He wants to give in to his bloodlust. Like, he, he, yeah. Like nope. as soon as he, he's resisting it until it's it, until the second he feels it, and he's like, nope, gotta kill. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. And that's that's like they don't really Whoops. focus on the horror of that. Um, yeah. It it just becomes kind of like something that happens in between panels, and you're like, why are you so upset? Like, I don't. I don't feel that you should be upset. It's it just all takes place in the dialogue. I think he should have like this self help program where he's just like, well, I'll do better tomorrow, and like <laughs> should be like, yeah, his his guiding focus is just trying to freak out all those all those bodies. <laughs> um. So anyway, the girl, and then all of a sudden, like the girl just turns out to be a psychic. And she's like, now I'm going to turn into Princess Leia. And like, look how hot I am. And you're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's it's he's, so weird. And then like he's she's clearly this projection of her future self, or at least that's what she says. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I you see now I excel not only in mind, but in physique <laughs> as well. And then he keeps calling her Vixen. It's just really fucking weird. <laughs> Yeah, well, I love like, that. Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Well, I was going to say, like, what future is she like projecting herself into? Where like this is like twenty years from now, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be wearing the Princess Leia outfit. I'm going to have a fucking whip on my uh, in my on my person. Um, wear a tiara. Like, it's do you grow up to fight in the battle mines of Andor or something? I don't know. It's, uh, 
it's very strange. Anyway, it is a hard thing to 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 project forward. I love that she like whips him right in the face. Like it's like literally like his whip is like wrapping around his head, and he's he's got this dialogue. Oh, the lash is no illusion. This thing is all too <laughs> real. What are you? <laughs> that's a it's a fucking horrific image though. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at it. Um, but yeah, like, she just the, whips, uh, the, the, the timing of like you know it's like this like it's a split second like a, a whip like doing that and like it's just so funny that he has this time to to get all that out as he's like wincing in pain that's a, i mean obviously that's a that's a weakness of like 1970s comics and we True. you know they would they would never do that now but it's funny how like it well i don't want to call it childish although it it is fairly childish it's just like you I guess it was the ethos at the time that if you, if you were going to have any panel, you also had to have words in it. Uh, you get very few silent panels, although we're going to get some silent panels later when P. Craig Russell gets involved. Um, some really heartfelt silent panels. But... <laughs> so he scorpions this chick. Come here! And uh, <laughs> with her own whip, again, punches her the fuck out and then immediately proceeds to suck all of her blood out. Um, yeah. I love that he's having this like, like he's just so offended because she thinks that he likes being bloodthirsty and he's just like has this like full on goth as fuck moment. You can't possibly understand my pain. <laughs> and then he's like, as he's punching her, the, punching her in the face. Only Martine ever truly understood me. Only she. Uh, I see Martine as a recurring like uh, Lenora kind of figure in these comics. Well, we see her later actually because she's we teamed do. up with. Diamond, yeah, I didn't, re- I, I wasn't sure, like, did they ever establish that was his old lover? Because, like, when she showed up again, I was like, I know who that is because I'm a pervert and I know who people are <laughs> in the comics, but I was like, would anyone else know who that is? And and actually, I kind of doubted myself. I'm like, do I, do I actually know who that is? Um, so he overcomes that little girl's uh, future self. And for no reason whatsoever, he's also drained her blood. It's like, I got to get her to the hospital. Quick, fuck, 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 fuck. That's right. Yeah, it takes the limo. And uh... <laughs> and then this ropes figure is like, you have to take the next right. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's in this, like, dream state. Like, n- none of this makes any fucking sense. And then he flies yeah. up to, then he drives up to a haunted house just because, like, some ghost told him to. Childish, like, really, like, yeah, I think that really is the perfect tone. Like the Morbius's scientific curiosity also feels like a child's representation. He's just, he's just constantly commenting on stuff in like the, the most G whiz way. Like he's just incapable of, he's just one of those people who has to speak his thoughts out loud, but uh, <laughs> yeah. you took Flash. it from me without touching her psychokinesis. Yeah. Well, I think and it's because we... doesn't accurately convey what the fuck just happened there. Like, if uh if 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 Gil Kane was able to like actually draw like a body being like captured by someone's mind and carried across, it looks like he just like kind of like tosses her to him. Um, and That's the only true. Yeah. It's uh it's, it is probably yeah the Marvel method at play. Yeah. Kind of a funny image though. This is like you know. Although yeah. if it is the Marvel method at play, would, this means like a lot of this weird shit just comes from Gil Kane. <laughs> <laughs> That's also like, true. Steve Gerber to like lot. pick up the pieces, wonder what the fuck to do. Now there's people oh, in yeah. vats. Yeah, so we get introduced to uh, to the caretakers who are this. <laughs> they came to Earth on a comet. This is such a oh, this is a weird premise. This. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so they've been they've been orchestrating human history since forever, basically. Ten thousand uh, years ago. Yeah, they came on a comet. Comet. They're guiding uh, evolution. I like that panel where they're like they're teaching apes how to use like bows, and he's just giving the ape the side eye. Yeah. <laughs> No, they're building Stonehenge in the background and they're teaching, giving everybody fire. And I like that the timeline is ten thousand years ago. I like how like this isn't even plausible uh, no. it, like according to modern, modern archaeology <laughs> uh, yeah it's just like it's like the gods from outer space uh, Prometheus coming like the you know like mythology it's it's all 
it's all aliens, um, which is pretty de rigueur at the time, right? Like that's that was the thing that they were up to. Um, anyway, yeah. they're the caretakers. Yeah. I'm not sure what they're plan. They're oh, I don't know. There's concerns here about societal collapse, like your classic fears of degeneration. Uh, yeah. Now is the most important moment in history. We need to intervene, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1974, the most important <laughs> moment in history. Yeah. Uh, uh, and there's such fucking Pollyannas. Like they're just like, yeah, human history is great. We're gonna keep it up. Um, we're creating a race of Superman to to, <laughs> to guide humanity. The fucking deal Kill breaker right there. Something. No thanks. Yeah. I'm out. <laughs> and Morpheus is uh, Morpheus is too, which is great. Uh, yeah, do your own destroying. They want him to. Uh, what do they want? Oh, they want, they want to. Kill to that's right. Yeah, because they're in war. They're like they're they're the faction that is uh, at war with with uh, Damon. Yeah, because he's like he's magic in their science. Like it's just this weird, very I don't know. It makes it makes sense in a superhero context uh, like this. But, and I do like that Morpheus in all these images is just baffled, just completely fucking confused. What what is what, what what's happening? Um, and yeah, but this this dichotomy between science and and magic and science and supernatural or science and, and superstition. Um, it's kind of it's kind of a good place actually to put Morbius because he self identifies as that, and I think it gives it also the dream like more of a dream like quality like that this is just taking place in his own psyche, uh, like the, these concerns about his thirst and hunger and desire to suck on women, uh, in this landscape of um, you know he's a vampire who was a scientist you know supernatural slash science etc yeah he's, it's about yeah anyway he's trying to figure himself out yeah although he's also trying to have a rip roaring superhero adventure yeah and he does he i like that i like the um the caretaker's motivation for recruiting him <laughs> they're like well we need you because our race has been bred to abhor violence <laughs> it's basically <laughs> just like yeah you fucking psychos you'll be perfect for this job he is you know like yeah. he's like like he abhors violence as well, but he like he's he just cannot not engage in violence. He's really a fucking train wreck. Yeah, um, it's sort of like that. Like um, I don't know, like that, like an alcoholic moment, or like if you're a junkie and like your 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 ex girlfriend like happens upon you, you're this like just like just degenerate state. But uh, like that's basically the judgment he faces as uh, as um, what's her face Martine shows up. And uh, she's yeah. like Damon. She just hates him, wants him dead. She's she's joined this kind of his cult. Like that's a lot to process for him. Yeah, just to like kill him. Like and and it's dropped completely. Like we don't get any like backstory on how she ended up. I don't I don't remember anyway. Like how she ended up with Damon and like why she's there. Uh, except to show up in this dream moment when he's getting attacked by a giant cat. Um, what's this Belkatar? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was called Belkatar. <laughs> it's like they introduced it as a demon, but then much like uh, Morbius, it had, well, that's not a scientific um, origin, but uh, you find out that it's <laughs> the origin story is bonkers. It's a oh, wizard it's wild. enjoyed experimenting on house cats, so um, he created this one, this giant like leopard monster, and then kept making them to give to all of his friends. Yeah, and they ended up out of control, and like all the wizards are like, we gotta put these guys in a box, and so they ended up in this like, we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, <laughs> which is strange to say. <laughs> <laughs> but they end, up, they end up in this like nether realm in this subterranean city, and you, you're like, why, why? You know, like how is this all? But somehow, like he does create like this Mobius strip, Morbius strip, um, oh. you know, so it all together, and you're just like, this is like. This makes sense, but it doesn't. Like it really doesn't. It doesn't. Like it's, it's associative logic, uh, just going from thing to thing and trying to tie it all together and failing, or succeeding, but in in a way that could have never ever. Like Doug Bench took over for a reason. Like 
Like this yeah. was going <laughs> this <was> working because <laughs> <laughs> after these issues, there's a whole issue of like him fighting Blade. Uh, the the giant eyeball man flies him back to Earth, and then he ends up on Earth, and he immediately fights Blade for the entire issue, and then he ends up, I think, attacking Damon, and then I don't know. It's it just loses all momentum. Uh, and yeah, real mess. Anyway, I like that this cat like kidnaps Morbius. Um, well, I guess it happens in the next uh, issue. No, it's in this one. He he has to. I guess he gets the summons from the king of the cat people, and he has to. He slips control of uh, Damon. Right. No, he ends up getting pinned, and then the next issue, the 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 guy steals him, isn't it? Oh, I'm or, sorry, you're right. Yeah. I don't want to get something like that wrong. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was all. I thought cat stuff happened all in that second issue, but no, you're right. It's sort of the climax of the first. Oh, geez. It could totally happen, though. Yeah. Anyway, the. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we find out about this underground city and, and like the the story's ridiculous. Like uh, they didn't realize that even though they put us in the city, we would learn the ultimate civilization and we wouldn't kill each other. And we would like establish peace and harmony and medicine. But we'd have an overpopulation program problem because we're cats. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um. And their their fucking plan, it's really an impromptu plan, um, is when uh, – because I guess they decide they're like, we're going to introduce a destructive element, but they don't know how to get the one because they're stuck. (laughs) They're stuck in the thing except for one cat who can always be summoned by assholes to fight on their behalf. Um, And he gets there, and he's like, I found the perfect guy. And so he takes him back, and like the idea is, is, I guess, like, we have an overpopulation problem. You have a killing people problem. <laughs> let's, let's scratch each other's back here. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Of course, Morbius is horrified, but so he flees in defiance. But his first act is just to go and indiscriminately kill. <laughs> and then everybody gets pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah it's so good. <laughs> Because yeah. the king's like, that's our guy. Like, make sure it's, it's, it's real fuck up. Like, this is your whole plan, guys. Like, you need this guy. Like, the golden goose just showed up, and you let him fly out your window in a huff, and you didn't tell everybody not to kill him. Um, yeah. I just, you I don't have, You should be my feast. I love the sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> and the cats show up. They're like a gang. And uh, I love that they... It's like they have claws, obviously, but they just grab a bunch of clubs. Oh, they beat the sh- living shit out of them. Yeah. yeah, they throw a rocket first and then just get them and just actually they don't even use their clubs. They just fist them to death. Well, they don't fist them to death, but <laughs> that'd be a different sort of thing. Um, yeah, throw them in the river of oblivion. That's another thing that makes this like this isn't taking place because it's the you know it's it's it goes back to Plato. You know, like the river, river Leth. Um, this idea that you're going to get thrown in the waters and, and disappear. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe I'm beating a dead horse, but he, he's, he is fighting a bunch of cat people. So maybe that's dreamlike enough. But And they throw yeah. him in the water and he's excited. He's like, yes, now I'm going to escape. You idiots. And he does. Sure as shit does. Yeah. <laughs> It's not really planned. He's sort of buffeted about like a fucking moron throughout all these stories. Um, yeah. I don't think it doesn't really have free will. I I think that's what what like he. I I don't think he makes any conscious choice, except in that well, he does try to fly away from those guys, but then he kills someone right away, like you said, right? So he does he does reject the caretakers, and I guess that's something. Well, yeah, like it's something on paper, but I mean, I don't think it amounts to much. You know what? That's true because he has, like, obviously he has to fight Draymond, who's cast a mind control spell on him. Like, he, inevitably he's gonna he's gonna turn on that guy. Yeah, he's, well, the guy's got his old girlfriend and stuff, like or his wife, yeah, or that's true. something. You know? Like, there's there's gonna be a confrontation. 
regard like so it's all so overdetermined it, like it again it, it, like this loop exists and you're like but the loop never closes <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's true. it just keeps looping you're like <laughs> it's circling the train you're like jesus but at least um craig russell shows up um and and things take on a special um extra dreamy quality at this point although there's no backgrounds again it's just like although none of these have really had much in the way of backgrounds yeah um, this one's fight, special too he fights this soldier or this viking guy shows up yeah well he, he was this like yeah this viking guy nesting with um this blonde warrior woman i guess and uh you know just like lovers in repose and he just like ambushes them once again he's found his feast right <laughs> yeah it's needs needs blood again but the you surprise know, guess, twist is that this guy's an android yeah. blood tastes terrible <laughs> it's like what the fuck then we get some backstory here yeah well we just we just gloss over to the fact that she's like fucking an android like that's well, is she human in this? Like, uh, I, oh yeah, that's a good point. She's like a master race thing, right? Yeah, yeah. She does, he does drink her blood later, doesn't he? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah, like one of the android soldiers. You know, like I guess it's why not, man? It's a dreamscape. Yeah. Hmm? Who are we to? What are we? What are we shaming here? Are we kink shaming? That's true. <clears throat> I could have a giant robot barbarian woman. Don't don't think I wouldn't. Um, <laughs> this links back to uh, to our discussion on heavy metal. In fact, <laughs> okay, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about that. Um, Game though. You female. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. Just a lot of like meandering. Like, so we get caught up on because it's sixty days between issues. So this is someone's first issue of Adventure into Fear. So everybody gets caught up. A uh, page and a half is used up. And he fusses for a little bit about having killed someone. <laughs> he's just like covering his face. <laughs> he's like, wait a minute. It's a robot. Thank Christ. <clears throat> Classic. Yeah, he just gets right to it. That's true. So, uh, yeah, then he ends up... Um, talking with this one-eyed green purple people eater guy uh in this like ruined no no not yeah. a ruined city oh actually it's kind of ruined yeah it's like this majestic city that's all fucked up she is still alive at this point by the way she okay, does come back see? at the end right right um that's true but <laughs> he, he kills her there anyway um i like these like the the sort of this alien's weird. Uh, I think that's fair, fair to say. It's just like a giant eyeball head. Uh, it's telepathic and like it disappears for some reason. And it refers to itself only as I. Uh, it's wearing a cape like a, for some reason as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I don't trust that. And he's given like a gives like a weird Nazi salute to him when he sees him later. Again, Morbius, incorrect. Twas I who promised. And like, yeah, he's like jumping around in time. Like he doesn't quite exist. Yeah, and he won't let Morbius go. He's going to hold him prisoner because uh, if he helps the caretakers, then <laughs> you get the grand reveal. Uh, they yeah. might end up like his people. Turn, Morbius. Meet the people of Arcturus. The caretakers are our ancestors. And Jesus Christ, what a... You think yeah. literally had to feed woman here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Goblin <laughs> guy. Yeah, it's kind of like the, they've... And maybe this comes over to the to the science and versus magic thing or science versus supernatural like it's like yeah they're like hobgoblins they're all demons and and creatures uh you know kind of the flip side of science in this like we you know science produces this which i guess is the point um yeah i like that the alien guy the well guy is like really philosophical the freakishness is relative we yeah. <laughs> on this planet the non-mutants are the exceptions the freaks yeah. Although, why would they call them mutant? Yeah, I don't know. The, the language falls apart, but I uh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, so it's basically like the um, 
the space, uh, the caretakers, they were ultimate eugenicists, essentially, like genetic engineers, CRISPR kind of people. And uh, so then they created a bunch of supermen uh, against the will of the people. There was a war, but then they've like, they fl- did they leave the planet first? Uh, they left the planet first, super- and then they left, yeah. they left behind their technology so that in their absence, people were just like, hey, we could do gene therapy. And, uh, you know, we, we don't have we can always have perfect children. But then terrorists kind of like disagree with that. So they just they start blowing things up and there's a yeah. war. But when did they leave? I thought they like left behind. Like, OK, I guess you're right. OK, sorry. Yeah. I, I thought or I thought they had accomplished their mission before they left. They were like, mission accomplished. And then they left and they didn't realize the mess that happened afterwards. I guess it really doesn't yeah. matter. The 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 outcome is the same. <clears throat> I think that they were like, and, yeah, like we fucking did it. We made this like these like <laughs> blonde haired, probably yeah. blue eyed, like blonde women that uh, that you drained. Um, let's get out of here and, and improve the rest of the galaxy. And then this nightmare sort of happens in their absence. Yeah, because it's very, they're very Norse. They're very like uh, Aryan. You're you're right. Like 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 the soldier that she's sleeping with is is uh, yeah yeah the sort of like Viking ideal that you you might have had amongst those quarters amongst the Volkish uh, persuasion. Yeah <clears throat> yeah. So the image is there, and obviously the concern with eugenics and and um, Superman. Um, yeah. And yeah, so they, they, there's these whole race of super these these people who like their lifespan can be measured in centuries, not years. They are the super race in every respect, save one. They have no instinct for self-preservation, and they're just like we, you know, like we're failures. Um, <clears throat> like their one ethos is to be super, to be like the perfect race, and the fact that they failed means that suicide. You know. Yeah. I love that it's like this like Nietzsche and Superman just has like no uh no instinct to to continue on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What is the lesson here? Like I don't it's such a it's I don't think he knows where he's going with it. It's just sort of like just spinning plates and hoping that they don't I all I think so. I I think like there's a like a lot of he's really swinging for the fences here. Like he's he's got weak ass material. The weakest fucking material you could possibly deal with. And he's like, I'm going to try it. Like, I'm going to deal like, wh- OK, what is the vampire? What is the and what is Morbius other than like the science, the, the supernatural ses- slash science conflict? And, uh, and and what's the thing that he's driven by? Like, he doesn't want to kill people, but he kills people all the time. And and so, like, what do I do with that? Like, what what larger philosophical point can I make or. What can I plug it into in order to make it interesting? And honestly, like this is this is something you can do with that. Um, but <clears throat> you might have you you ought to have had an idea of like what your finish line was going to look like. Yeah. Which uh, I don't know. Maybe he did, or maybe yeah, he's just an early freelancer and just fucking around. And he goes off to greener pastures after this because people were like, "That's crazy. Put him on Man Thing." Yeah, that's probably a good call. Yeah, but sorry, go ahead. Oh no! They, ultimately, the only reason I uh, I got you to read these comics is just for the final three panels where he uh, he basically calls their bluff and he's like, "Well, you guys don't want to live, huh? <laughs> what if I just take this beautiful woman and start sucking on her neck, huh? You know?" And then like the penis face guy starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. I definitely made note of that. Or it's like yeah. when you are a giant eyeball and you close that eye, <laughs> it's yeah. hard to know what's going on. It's uh, ripe, ripe with meaning. Uh, yeah, pregnant, pregnant with signification. <clears throat> yeah. So I was just, I was just shocked. My jaw was on the floor when I read these comics. Yes. Uh, and then he blames them. He just murders this woman yet again. None of you made a move to stop me. It's what she would have wanted. Well, that's it. That's it. Like, and he's, and at that moment, he finally grasped it. He's like, Jesus, these people, like they're, this is a profoundly like 
it is it is horrific if you really kind of think about it like these people who will live thousands of years and they won't commit suicide <clears throat> but they'll hate their life to such an extent that they like they they'll just let themselves die if the opportunity emerges but they've created a you know it's kind of a twilight zone thing where they've created a society where like they nothing bad could happen to them so yeah, sort of I guess rotten, that's, yeah cuz it's a, like theoretically a utopia was set up before the caretakers left yeah yeah, so they're just sort of sitting there, like doing nothing, just apathetic. Uh, and so he's like, "Fuck, yeah, <laughs> we can't let this happen. This is gonna happen to Earth." I do like the overtone of, you know, if we, if things were perfect, it would, it would just be kind of a miserable existence. Like it's, you know, you can't sanitize things too much, and that's sort of. I guess in his own chaotic way, that's that's what Morbius is bringing to the table, you know. Well, he's he's like, yeah, well, he, he makes things dirty, man. He's the destructive yeah. force, and he sure is the destructive force. Um, yeah. When you got a soul and, patch like that, like, <laughs> and like, bring something to the table. Yeah. yeah. It's like high lapels. <laughs> You're drawing pulls his stuff away from the person for whatever reason he's doing like this karate chop maneuver over his face it's very stylish to, like is he like hiding the blood in his teeth it must be it must be like a, a shame shitty reflex. way i guess so yeah don't look at my mouth i got spinach yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. anyway so yeah these that that was that i just wanted you to get a sense of like um what steve gerber is like i i felt that this was this was kind of representative of the the level of weirdness that he might get up to without without us having to read Howard the Duck, which um, that's more than I I don't mind skimming that. You know, I don't mind visiting, but I don't really want to live there. I don't want to talk about those comics. Um, that's fair. I'm always up to, no. to, to dive into the weird past of I mean, it seems like Marvel is I'm sure DC has a share, but I feel like DC is a bit dippier, maybe like but uh, anything goes anything goes in the 70s of marvel and that's fun to check out yeah yeah absolutely yeah no and i think it's the like 70s dc is still very childish they're 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 focusing on like superboy and you know like it's it's weird in that high romanticism way uh maybe with some occasional fucked up shit but nothing like this like no one's no one's doing acid at dc that's right exactly yeah there's drugs are going on behind the scenes here guys are weird as fuck weird hippie like um fantasy novel enthusiasts and sci-fi novel enthusiasts and they were like they just want to take that that sensibility and and bring it because this is the like you got don mcgregor you got doug minch we got chris claremont um i don't know i guess i could name a bunch of other names but it's just like a, a whole thing where these guys they just want to kick it up a notch you know like from whatever stan lee was up to um and yeah sometimes good sometimes bad sometimes just outright insane yeah so anyway thanks for that thank you (laughs) 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 that sounds sincere yeah yeah that's good i'll buy it good yeah now all we need is a little energon and a lot of luck 